Hello, uh, I'm John David Ebert and welcome to my vlog here. Uh, I'm going, this is part of a series that I'm doing where I'm going mobile through Santa Fe, interviewing, uh, interviewing poets and writers and, and having fun with them. And this is the great Santa Fe artist, Blair Von Gruler, and uh, I'm introducing her to my YouTube audience. And uh, what we're going to do is walk through the gallery and look at these marvelous paintings and uh, have a conversation about them and just have fun. And um, so I figured what we'd do, uh, Blair wrote this wonderful artist statement that I like a lot, occlude, penetrate, resolve, paint in relation to the body. And she quoted uh, Roland Barthes' essay about wine and milk where she talked, where Bart makes the distinction between uh, milk being something that's soothing, uh, dense, uh, layering, holds things together, and wine is something that's more sculptural, more chiseling, more analytical, more acidic. And in relation to the creative process, you've talked about how, uh, for you, that's a perfect like description of how you layer and chisel and work your art. Would, would you want to riff on that like a little bit and just like go with what you were thinking? Yeah, about? yeah, yeah. I love that uh, combination of the idea of milk and wine because they're they're opposites, but they also do overlap in their ability to activate the body, I guess, is what I, right. how I would think about it. I mean, I think the wine component is refers to things uh, not being obvious and not being simple and then the desire for a deeper introspection that wine can bring. Uh, but milk, on the other hand, is is the great soother. So when those two things collide, to me, right. that's where this happens, and yeah. uh, I want to be in between. It's, a, it's an interesting dichotomy too, because it kind of it kind of makes me think of Dionysus, right, with the wine, uh, the god of wine, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the milk of the great mother, uh, like uh, Artemis of Ephesus, is the great mother with all the multi breasts. Yeah. She has all the breasts yeah. because she's the giver of milk. Yeah, and her body is the nourishment. I sort of like think of those two. When I read that, I thought because I. Started out in mythology, that was my bad. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and I thought about that Dionysus and Artemis and how they're kind of like hidden archetypes underneath this, what, what is apparently purely abstract. But I think if we dig, you know, for a while and play with them, we'll find all kinds of stuff. So, like, this one is one of your earlier ones, right? It's uh, 2016? Yeah, 15, 16. 15, 16. I think okay. it was a, over a period of time, actually. Yeah. And you have this procedure of, of densely layering stuff. Would you describe that a little bit? How do you get, where do you start? Yeah, well it depends on the media and you know, some of some of my pieces are all uh, oil paint with a, bit, a lot of layers and we will look at some of those in a minute. This one's actually on a panel and it's a, a oh, surface okay. that can take water media huh. and you can erase the water media, you can right. get shadow images, some of this has been rinsed off so it's sort of the, it's a building it's a building process like of of creating and then eliminating or you know um, editing and then adding more hmm. and adding more and, and uh, that's now I mean looking at this like at a first glance I mean clearly there's been like a huge influence on you from like American Abstract Expressionism right you you yes. got sort of Cy Twombly in there yes. and Agnes Martin. And uh, maybe a little Adolf Gottlieb, and, and people like that, and yeah, because yeah, I had some, some Robert Ryan, and maybe you know, I yeah, can sort yeah, of yeah. feel them in there. Yeah, so nice. is that correct? That's yes, correct. that is correct. Uh, That's archaeology. My, my uh, tribe, the tribe I aspire to. Yes. Uh, and did you come from the East Coast uh, too? Uh, that... I'm I'm a Midwesterner actually, originally from Michigan, mm -hmm. um, and yes, I grew up in the '50s and '60s, and I thought. Ab abstract expressionism was the truth. Right, you know? absolutely. And then I found out quite a bit later that it was maybe not. Uh-huh, I see. So I, I, I've actually written for myself quite a bit about trying to leave behind the modernist perspective and the, the urges that abstract expressionism instilled in me as a young child. Yeah. I mean, when I've, I've been a painter all my life, and when I discovered Jackson Pollock, I was about seven or eight, uh -huh. and I was like, there it is, yeah. you know? I, I wasn't until I was in college that I discovered him, and I thought, <laughs> you know, he was absolutely amazing. And I loved his earlier stuff, too, the stuff nobody ever talks about. You yes, know, yes. The wolves and the shamans. Yes, and I just yes. loved the whole progression yes. with the dissolution of form into the dynamic energies. 
there's a lot of that kind of dynamic energy. In it. Like what's this piece over here? Uh, there's a lot of uh, dynamic energy, but it's very unlike Pollock, which is explosive. This is very compressed and contained. It's got a very sort of rigid uh, sculptural order to it that I like that compresses the signifiers into the space space. It's really wonderful. Well, you know, and back to kind of the milk and wine idea. Yeah. I mean, the mark making is, for me, very soothing, the repetitive motions over and over, the layers of repeating. I always sort of feel like that's uh, adjusting my brain chemistry. Mm. And, you know, nowadays we need our brain chemistry right. adjusted yeah. regularly. Yep. Uh, but there also has to be the factor where it sort of goes off the rails and it's not all lined up neatly. A lot of times I start out to make, you know, really neat rows of shapes and I get halfway into it and I'm like, I gotta mess this up. How can I, right. how can I It gets too predictable and Something. you want to take a left turn. And yeah, and then I, and I have learned over time the left turn is the best part and that's not to be fixed. That's the Dionysus, the, the unpredictable yeah. energy of the, the left turn. You don't know where he's going to take you. It's yeah. Wild, explosive, chaotic uh, energy. Um, yeah. That's but wonderful. this particular piece, though, was created, again, this is on the panel. It's called Clayboard, and it's an ah, absorbent okay. surface. Yeah. I painted a whole entire painting on there, and then I scraped the whole thing off with a big scraper. I think that was part of the left turn. I'm like, yeah. I know. I'll, I'll now kill it. And then this was born. That reminds me of Gerhard Richter's first uh, painting of the table there where he yeah. makes a painting out of an art Italian furniture magazine of the table and he thinks, oh, this is terrible. And he swipes it and there's this <laughs> mess and then he goes, perfect. <laughs> now I'm on to something. <laughs> yes. okay, and he was. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Okay, uh, moving along then. Um, these over here are like some of my favorites. I, I love the uh, the compression of each of these. You packed them with signifiers. Talk a little bit about your process here. What was involved? Well, this I call these accumulation paintings, and I started out with a little set of rules to make a hundred, mm. and of all the same size, of the same vocabulary of shapes. In general, I was going to use a really subdued palette, which is kind of my territory. But as right. you can see, I took a left turn here and there. Right, right. Um, but anyway, it's it, and they're they're glue. There are shapes glued onto little canvases, so that. it's yeah, compulsive so cool. gluing uh -huh. is what it really is. Right. And uh, anyway, my story is I did about 20 and then I was like, well, there, I've done all the possible ways I can do this. Right. And I was like, well, too bad you have to keep going because you have to do 100. And so now I'm up to over 450 and wow. um, none of them are the same. That is amazing. As far as I can remember. That is absolutely. Yeah. They're stunning. They're, they're, they're just so... Uh, Compressed and compact, and just you can just feel them pulsing with energy. Yeah, nice. You know? Thank you. They're, they're, just, yeah. they're alive. These things are alive. They're really fun they're to like make. They're like cells. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. They're it's really they cells are cells made out of signifiers. That's art great. cells. Love that. Yeah. They are just super compulsive because I go in, um, you know, batches, and sometimes it's a batch of several dozen. Um, but it's like they build on themselves. It's like they're reproducing themselves. They, they, yeah, without <laughs> they are. They are alive, actually. It's, as it turns out, uh, they they reproduce asexually. They just mitotically split, and there they go. But this, and the satisfying thing for me, which is really threaded throughout all of my work, is is the organizing and the fitting and the making yeah. sense. Making sense. There's a little bit of an obsessive compulsiveness. There about is. That, yeah. Right? Is, I know. Like how long does one of these take you to? I can go through the um, the the basic gluing procedure really fast. I can do mm. six or eight of them in a in a in a half a day, mm. and then though then there becomes layers of paint, and then the right. process slows down, and you know some sometimes drawing and sometimes other things that happen. Okay. So. Wow, these are great. Okay, let's move on. Let's see. What